So I'm basically throwing a thick, thick cylinder. Uh, I, I want to keep it really thick at this stage. Uh, I want to get the clay in a bit at the bottom so that it's, um, I don't want it too wide, but I want it fairly thick so that I can stretch it. So I don't want to sort of get too at tall. I mean, I'm talking about too thick, I'm talking about that thick, because if I'm going to open it out, uh, I've got to, I'm going to have a wide clay there. Really keep it in, and um, with all these texture ones, I'm thinking about these stretch ones. I'm thinking about the proportions because you don't get a little bit of height to begin with. You're going to end up with a very small sort of bowl. So one of the things, one of the things I'm sort of hoping you come away from this week about is just thinking a lot more about thickness of walls, um, even when you're throwing normal things you're more aware of the thickness rather than just doing the, just doing it until it buckles on you or something. But you're actually thinking about it, where where the thick and also where the thicknesses are. Um, you're going to be more aware of it. Okay, so that I think that's about right. Now if I really want to stretch and expand it, I make it narrower and narrower and keep it really tight. And also if I'm wanting to really twist it, I dry the inside, so I don't have any stuff on the inside, but the inside wall very dry. Now, now I start thinking about the rim. Okay. Oh. Oh, I'm doing what? No, yeah, you're, you're getting filmed. Oh. Well, <laughs> I just stood up and I just start to clean it up a bit. I'm not sure whether I've quite got sufficient height. It might end up being a tiny bit squat. I don't know. I'll just have to see how it goes. And get all that slip off. Um, now, what I, what I might do here is also... Um, <coughs> Clean up the at least the outer edge of the rim, so that's reasonably removed of slip. I don't mind the little edges and things like that. That's all right. Now, what I might do just to do something a little bit different from the previous ones on the rim is I might just put a little bit of a channel in the top edge and just see what happens to that later. Um, again, it's a little bit like what I was talking about with those squared ones earlier this week. Um, do things to the rim so if the rim does start to move around and take some interesting sort of profile and shape, that you've got activity on the rim that highlights it and sort of brings it more to attention. So I might just add, now this may this may get completely disappear later. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. Okay. channel there at least I've got something that might might do something. I'm a little bit worried about that top edge being too sharp and so I'll just press that down and keep it around it. Okay, so now we're ready to start facing. I'll just clean my hands. stays there and then you just peel it away. Um, now, I'm going to cut it more again. That one? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Um, just 
just put a line. Again, you don't, go, you don't go need to worry about the bottom third that much, unless you want to go right to the wheel hip, which I do sometimes, but I won't do this way. Um, and also what I tend to think about is if I'm doing really complicated panels on four sides, then the panels in between I keep simpler. But I don't have, you don't have to do that. That just emphasizes that you have got these facets. Whereas if you do complicated all the way around, you lose the sense of the faceting a little bit, but it, it's really up to you what you do. Um, now, uh, I'm going to be putting some of these back on, so. Um, no, I'm keeping these because I'm going to use this. And then just maybe give a little bit of try something different, I'll do, I'll do something different and the opposite ones. I'll do the same thing.
these are just, this was just thrown on the wheel, you know, in column of clay and then cut with a spring, and then cut away and disify. So that's the uh, top of So I support the insides of it. try and push it up and over that rim a bit if I can. And take the rim out reasonably well. Now I like that edge a bit, but I don't want it too sharp, so flatten it and maybe down a tiny bit. Now, what I usually do now is go back and just make sure that anything that's sort of starting to come off and lift away is sort of uh, worked back on to so get rid of those any edges, thin edges. And now it's just a matter of shaping the bowl and taking it as far as I can and lubricating it a little bit now. Keep my finger on the rim to try and keep the rim a little bit under control shape-wise. Try and make sure you get the line right on the inside so you've got a good line. 
but you could go back later and clean that up. If it's starting to get a little bit misshapen at the top, start to pull that back in. I still like these to be you know, robust and muscular, but also um, well, I see they're not totally misshapen. I sort of want the shape of these two wings to be okay. So sometimes I'll do it at a later stage, but sort of just pushing out from the inside with the wheel going very slow, just trying to sort of emphasize the panels a bit more and push them out. I'm not sure, I'm not too worried at this stage about the overall shape, but at some stage I will um, go back and if I can just that power, just start to sort of pull the whole thing back into shape a bit with dry handles so that it's sort of where it's really getting a bit misshapen and trying to And also, you can always go back later and um, do a tiny bit more sometimes when they're just a little bit further. Uh, because the idea now is to just get as far stretched as I can. But I can always take one of those little kidneys later the next day and just cook it out and just even do it that more. And maybe sometimes emphasize some of the bridging or something so that it becomes even a little bit more I keep using that word muscular sort of the sense of muscles. Um, and also go back but don't touch it with any slip and just any edges just work them back in. Because I'm often I'm often dipping these in slip at a later stage and if I have any pieces that are sticking out uh, like the, they will tend to snap off, they'll break off because the slip will sit in the crevices and it'll weaken them and then they'll break off. They're also then going to be very sharp and very brittle later and they'll chip and knock off. So I, while I want to keep all the sort of detail of the clay, I don't want anything that's really too sharp. That edge there I really like, but I might try and just work it back sort of curve it over so it's not sticking out too much. Any of these little bits I just sort of tap them back very lightly. But the most main thing I'm looking for at the moment is just the overall form. I think that's about right. It's pretty you know it's 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 pretty full. I don't think I can stretch it much more than that now. Uh, if I do, I risk putting my finger through one of the sides somewhere. I'm better to do it almost later. There's always a tendency to fiddle too much now, and probably better to let it just set the time we get. No, that's it. Yeah, just so that it, it's not going to suddenly collapse on you, Sarah. Because you've got a lot of different thicknesses on these on these areas between the panels. It's still, you know, it's still a good sort of that thick, but. In some of these other areas, it's almost like paper, it's so sort of thin. Now that was a little bit more open clay, so it's tempted to sort of, it's, it's a bit sandy and gritty, so it's tended to fragment more. I do do some, um, not on this scale, smaller, uh, where I literally have small rocks in them, and they really cover them with the really split and everything, and then I patch them up. And, I've got one that's a real beauty that I like. Just like that. But anyway, yeah. that's basically it. And, and I trimmed around the bottom already, so just cut it off. I've always liked texture, and I've always liked stretched clay, and the texture that comes from stretching clay. So, but I also like throwing, so it's always been a way of trying to combine the two. And this was finally how I sort of sort of way of doing it. Any questions? And any any way of stretching of course might be on the wheel if you do it. Any way of stretching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I've got the basic shape. Any information would be won't do it on the wheel. You could do it on a banding wheel, so you can just yeah. move it around and, and work on it. Yeah, yeah. And then this can get to start it. And then what I was going to do is I'll do one more. Uh, but I can do it now, or you can have a, you can a go for a while, and then I can do another one. Um, it'll be slightly different, but it's even a bit more complicated than, than this one.
So maybe have a few have an hour's go and then I'll do one for warm before lunch. That way you're moving around the one or sitting here for 